In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how you can back up Proxmox virtual machines to a Synology NAS. Now we're gonna be utilizing NFS, so for that reason, the first thing that we have to do is actually configure NFS on our Synology NAS, and then we're gonna move over to Proxmox. Before we get started, I just wanna mention that I have full written instructions in the description of the video. So the first thing that you're gonna do is open up the control panel and then select File Services and then NFS. You can then select Enable NFS Service and then Apply. The maximum NFS protocol can stay as NFS v3, so everything should stay as default, and then as long as it's applied, you can move on to the next section where you're gonna to have to actually pull up a shared folder, which is where you're gonna want your Proxmox data to be written to. So for me, I already created a shared folder named Proxmox, but if you don't know how to do that, I'll leave a pop-up now that'll show you how but you're just gonna to navigate to that folder and then you can select edit and then you're gonna to have to select NFS permissions inside of that. From there, you can select create and then we're gonna to have to create the NFS rule that's gonna allow our Proxmox server to read and write to our Synology NAS. So the first thing that you're gonna do is enter in the IP address of your Proxmox server here. So Proxmox should already have a static IP address, but if it doesn't, make sure that you go and set that up. But you're in essence just saying that this IP address will have access to this folder. So underneath that, you can leave the privileges as read-write, everything else can stay as default, and you just wanna make sure that you select the allow users to access mounted subfolders option, and then you can save. Once again, this is just saying that this specific IP address will have access to this shared folder on our Synology NAS. Now that that's done, you can head over to Proxmox and then you're gonna select Data Center and then Storage. What we're gonna to have to do here is add our NFS storage, which is our Synology NAS. So you can select Add and then NFS. And at the next screen, you're gonna to have to enter in some of this information. So you can enter in an ID. I'm just gonna set mine as Synology NAS Storage and then you're gonna to have to set the IP address of your Synology NAS. So once again, same thing is true as before. You have to make sure that you have a static IP address for your Synology NAS. If you don't have one, I'll leave a link in the description that will show you how, but just make sure that you enter in the IP address of your Synology NAS. Underneath that, you're gonna see Export, and when you select that dropdown list, you should be able to see the Proxmox folder that we had on our Synology NAS. Underneath that then, you're just gonna select all the options that you can, and then you can go through and you can add this. Now at this point, Proxmox can read and write to and from our Synology NAS. So we're now ready to actually back up our virtual machines. So there's two different ways that you can back up your virtual machines. You can individually do it, or you can go through and set up an automated schedule. We're gonna take a look at both of those options here, but we're gonna start with backing up an individual virtual machine. So you can select the virtual machine on the left-hand side, and then you can select backup. From there, in the top right, you're gonna see that the storage is set as local, and we're gonna to have to change that to our Synology NAS storage. This is just saying that at this point in time, we should read and write to that folder. You can then select backup now in the top left corner, and then you're gonna to have to select a mode and compression, and then you can select backup. And this is gonna go through, and it's gonna back up this virtual machine to your Synology NAS. Now, based on the size of that virtual machine, it might take some time, so be patient. But when it's done, you'll actually be able to go through and restore from this backup if you ever needed to. Now, that's a manual backup. You can run these as often as you want, and you should run it, you know, for the most part, as soon as you set up your virtual machine or it's configured the way you want it to be. But the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at automatic backups. Now, automatic backups will automatically back up your virtual machines to your Synology NAS based on a certain schedule. So in the top left corner, you're gonna select Data Center and then Backup, and then you can select Add. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be adding a backup schedule for the most part. So the first thing that you have to do is ensure that you select your Synology NAS storage, and then you can go through and specify a schedule for when you want your virtual machines to backup. Underneath that, you can change the selection mode, and this is just gonna be whatever virtual machines you wanna back up. So I only have one on this test server and this is what I'm gonna be backing up. But on the right hand side, you can determine if you want an email when the backups are done. And then you can also specify the compression and the mode, change any retention policies that you want, and then you can go through and you can create this rule. 
And like I said earlier, this is just going to back up all these virtual machines based on the schedule and the retention policy that you specified in an automated way so that you can go through and you can restore from these backups if you ever need to. So the last thing that we're going to take a look at is actually restoring a virtual machine. So it's great to have a backup, but it's also important to ensure that that backup is actually working. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually restore our backup. So before this video, I went through and I created a backup. I just basically created a bunch of uh, test files inside of my home directory so that we'll be able to restore from those. But you'll see here that I actually don't have anything listed. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut down this virtual machine and then we're going to select the backup tab. And in the top right corner, we're going to select our Synology NAS storage location. And then you're going to have to select the snapshot that you'd like to restore from. Now in this list, you might have multiple, so you're gonna to have to select the exact date and time that you wanna restore from. But after that, you can then select restore, and it's gonna bring up a quick pop-up, and all of this for the most part can stay as default, and then you can select restore. Now it's gonna take a little while to fully restore, but when it's done, this virtual machine will be back to that specific point in time that you restored from. So keep in mind that you're really restoring to a point in time. When you take a backup, you're backing up at that point in time, and when you restore, you're restoring from that point in time. All of this information is being backed up to our Synology NAS and being restored from our Synology NAS. Now on the Synology NAS side, you can actually go through and you can set up snapshots, you can set up backup tasks, so if you wanna back up these virtual machines to a cloud location using something like Hyper Backup, you can do that as well. You have a lot of flexibility here, and for the most part, since the data is actually living on the Synology NAS, you can really go through and configure some pretty powerful things. Now, one other thing that I wanted to quickly point out is after we set up the NFS storage on Proxmox, you'll see that we selected a bunch of the different options there. And that's just in essence saying what Proxmox can use this NFS storage for. So in this tutorial, we just really looked at how to back up and restore from that but you can actually use that NFS storage for various things. So a good example is just storing all of your ISO images for your virtual machines on your Synology NAS. So at that point, it's not local to your Proxmox server, it's all stored on your Synology NAS, and it just allows you to go through and it allows you to install from those ISOs if you ever needed to. You can actually store full virtual machines on that NFS storage as well. Now you probably don't wanna do this, um, unless your networking allows for it because the performance is going to be pretty terrible. But this is really just to highlight that you can do various things with that NFS storage. You don't only have to use it for backups, but backups and ISO images are probably what makes the most sense. So I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.